Hello, I'm going to present chapter 8 about the Arduino programming course for industrial use. In this chapter, we will see an introduction to the most present protocol communication available in the PLCs based on Arduino, Ethernet PLC. So, we will be talking about the Ethernet protocol. The Ethernet protocol is the most used for the IoT solution, gaining more strength every day in the industry. This protocol is a standard for local area network for computers. Ethernet defines the wiring and signaling characteristics of the physical level and the data frame formats of the data link level of the OSI model. This protocol is totally defined by the official Arduino library. In the example I am drawing, I am preparing the standard configuration of a local area network implemented with the Ethernet family PLCs. The most usual way to interconnect different devices by Ethernet is through the use of a router or switch, which is responsible of reading the addresses to which these packets should arrive and send them through the correct ports. The structure of the di diagram shows a computer on the left, which will be responsible for sending data to, to the different controllers in order, in order to manage them online. On the right side, we will have different Arduino-based controllers, which will process the information coming from the main computer. In this scheme, we could think that the main computer will have the role of server, and the different controllers will be the different clients that connected to it. You can take in mind that the standard architecture of a local network consists of one server and end clients. The server is always listening and it is the client who makes the request. However, if we look at the protocol level, we see how this is not always the case. The main computer, even if it is a server of a company, could perform the client function. In the same way, the PLC could perform the server function. What is thought to achieve with this is that the PLC is at all times listening. In this way, if the main computer sends a command for the PLC to activate, for example, an output, the PLC must be listening at all times a server function. When the main computer wants to send some type of data, it must start a connection with the PLC client as a client function. This structure only makes sense if the main computer manages the uses of the controller. On the other hand, it is also possible that the only function of the automation has is the collection of the data from different sensors and actuators. In this case, it does make sense for the host to act the protocol level as a server in the, in the, in the controller to act as client. The PLC will periodically connect to the server to send the data it has collected from the associated sensors. The most essential thing to keep in mind is the client or server model. The client-server architecture is a software design model in which the tasks are shared between the providers of resources or services, called servers, and the clients, called clients. A client makes requests to another program to serve who responds. The server is a device which is always pending to the reception of requests. In short, it is who is listening through the Ethernet port to see if someone wants to connect to it. The server does not initiate communication. On the other hand, the client is responsible for sending the connection request to the server. Therefore, it is in charge of initializing the communication for the properly working network. The server must always be online, while the clients may or may not be connected. If the server stops listening for some reason, the internet network is completely disconnected because no matter how many packages are sent, there will be nobody to manage them. The protocol that is normally used to control transmission is the Transmission Control Protocol, known as TCP. This protocol is one of the fundamental protocols on the internet. In a simple way, the protocol works in the following way. First, the client sends a connection request to the server. The server send the confirmation through an ACK response. The client, upon receiving confirmation from the server, sends the request to the server. Lastly, the server manages the request and acts accordingly. 
Many programs within a network computer of computer networks can use TCP to create connections with each other through which a data stream can be sent. The protocol guarantees that the data will be delivered to its destination without errors and the same order that was transmitted. The Ethernet protocol is based on the W5500 chip. This chip is fully integrated in the Ethernet PLC board. Communication between the Ethernet chip and the PLC is carried out using the SPI communication protocol. If we remember briefly, this protocol is based on four pins, which are uh, MISO, MOSI, STK, and SS. This first two are used to the sending and receive data, and the third is used for synchronization, and the last one is responsible of the enabling the chip. Enabling the, the pin is transparent to the user through the pin 10 of Arduino. D directly exists the circuitry that relates the Ethernet SS with pin 10 of Arduino. As mentioned previously, the Ethernet chip is the W5500. This is the original one used in the official Ethernet shield by Arduino. The library with which it is managed is the Ethernet2.h library. This library allows to work in its entirely with the W5500, given even the function to configure protocols over Ethernet and already commented in, the, in this video. What will be the TCP? In addition, you can add an external Wi-Fi module to get network connection wirelessly. TCP supports many of the most popular internet applications, browsers, file sharing, FTP, clients, etc. And HTTP, SMTP, SSH and FTP application protocols. Some of the main characteristics of TCP will be the following. It allows to place the segments again in order when they come from the IP protocol. It allows to monitor of the flow of the data and thus avoid the saturation of the network. It allows data to be formed in segments of varying length to deliver them to the IP protocol. It allows to multiply the data, that is to say that the information that comes from the different source, for example applications, in the same line can circuit simultaneously. Finally, it allows you to start and end the communication locally. In the Internet Protocol family, UDP provides a simple interface between the network layer and the application layer. UDP does not grant guarantees of the delivery of your messages. Some of the main characteristics of the UDP will be the following. It works without connection. That is to say that it does not use any synchronization between the origin and the destination. It works with packets or integer datagrams, not with individual bytes like TCP. An application that uses the UDP protocol exchanges information in the form of logs of bytes so that for every block of byte sent from the application layer to the transport layer, a UDP packet is sent. Not trustworthy. It does not employ flow control on other packages. Its great advantage is that it causes little additional load on the network since it is a simple and employs very simple headers. Modbus TCP allows the control of a network of devices and communicate the result to a computer. Modbus is also used for the connection of a supervisory computer with a remote unit and data acquisition supervision system like SCADA. The main reason why the use of Modbus in industrial environment has been imposed on, the other, on other communication protocols are it was designed taking into account its use for industrial applications. It is public and free. It is easy to implement and requires little development. Handles blocks of data without assuming restrictions. Through the Ethernet protocol, it is also possible to manage web request HTTP, adding additional libraries. In this way, the controller is able to be in communication with web servers through HTTP. The controller can also be defined as a web server or a web client. It is also important to know that if you need to use HTTPS, protocol, 
it is necessary the encryption of the messages. Nowadays, you can do it through external shields. Because the Ethernet chip is working through SPA, it is also possible to add Ethernet communication to any PLC with SPI communication port available as the Arbox family. After the current chapter, you know now that it is possible to define a local network through Ethernet protocol using PLCs based on Arduino from industrial shields.